Aloha, everybody, and welcome to this episode of Faith and Family First. I'm Eva Andrade. I'm your host. And today I'm going to be having a wonderful conversation with Liberty Council about a big win right here in the state of Hawaii regarding the Good News Clubs. And we're going to find out what happened before COVID, during COVID, after COVID, and why it's so important that we as people of faith need to pay attention to what's happening in Hawaii's public schools. So let's chat about that. I am here with wonderful Liberty Council attorney, Matt Staver, and we're going to be talking about a wonderful, wonderful thing that happened here in the state of Hawaii. And I know our viewers and listeners are always looking for wonderful news that happens here in our beautiful state. So welcome to the show today, Matt. Thank you. Good to be with you. So I think what will be helpful is a lot of people that are watching or listening, they may, they may not believe that good news can happen here in the state of Hawaii. And so maybe we should back up a little bit and kind of let people know what happened prior to COVID, what happened during COVID and what happened after COVID. And that way they'll know what's going on. Well, thank you. Uh, This is really good news for Hawaii because it involves the Good News Clubs, which is a very important club. It's Sponsored by Child Evangelism Fellowship, it's the largest Christian ministry in the world going back to the 1920s. And the Good News Clubs, among many of the things that Child Evangelism Fellowship does, they meet with primarily 4 to 14 uh, age group, uh, roughly K through 5 uh, age group, particularly in the schools. They're not only in schools, but certainly many of them are in the public schools immediately after school. So they are after school clubs. Uh, that teach good character and moral development from a Christian perspective. So, for example, they might give a biblical lesson about Joseph, who was betrayed by his brothers, thrown in the pit, left for dead, and sold as a slave into Egypt. And when he was elevated to the high position in Egypt, and then he ultimately revealed who he was to his brothers who needed food, instead of taking revenge on his brothers, he ultimately forgave them. So it's those kinds of biblical lessons that they learn about forgiveness, about good moral character and development. Uh, They are wonderful programs that are led by individual adults uh, that are trained for this age group, and they can only come to the club by parental permission. Mm. So parents know and they give permission for them to come to the after-school clubs. Well, prior to COVID, there were good news clubs in many of the public elementary schools throughout Hawaii and really throughout the nation. Then COVID happened. All the schools were locked down. And then after the restrictions began to be removed, uh, there were a number of schools throughout Hawaii, and it goes all the way up to the very top level of the Department of Education at the state level, that ended up discriminating against the Good News Clubs. They allowed a lot of clubs to come back on campus after school of a wide variety, but many of them prohibited the Good News Clubs, and they used COVID as an excuse to try to keep them out. Some of them came up with statements that the reason why you can't come on campus is because you're religious, particularly you're a Christian organization. Others made excuses that, well, we don't have enough room, even though the Good News Club said, well, we'll meet out in the open. And it's certainly, you know, with the Hawaii's beautiful weather, you can do that year round. And yet they still were denied. Time after time, they were denied. So we ended up filing a federal lawsuit on behalf of the Good News Clubs. And a federal judge just recently issued an order in our favor against not only the schools that we named specifically, but also against the entire Department of Education for the entire state of Hawaii. And uh, consequently, this is really good news because now as school opens up again in the fall, these good news clubs will be able to come on campus to provide really good news to these young uh, boys and girls in the public schools. So I'm hearing like two things that are really positive for our viewers and listeners. Number one is some of our viewers and listeners may not know 
that these good news clubs were meeting. And now because of this, we want people to know that there is an opportunity for you with parental consent to allow your children to attend these wonderful things that happen on campus. So what if, if, if I'm a parent and I'm sending my kid to a school that doesn't have a good news club, I know that, you know, Liberty Council, you guys are the attorneys that that back them up on the court case. But what happens if you don't have one and you want to have one? I mean, so can a parent approach the school and say, hey, we want to do this? Or is there a number that they call with the good news clubs? How does that work? Well, they can call us at uh, our phone number and we can put you in touch with the good news clubs or you can call the Child Evangelism Fellowship Organization nationally or internationally, which is headquartered in Missouri. Uh, internationally, that's where their headquarters are, you can contact them. Or you can just uh, look up in the um, location that you're at. If there's a good news club, certainly there are state good news clubs as well and state directors. But you can contact Liberty Council. You can go to lc.org and you can send us a, an email or you can call us and we'll put you directly in touch with the good news clubs. That would be the first step to actually make contact with somebody with Child Evangelism Fellowship and then tell them that you want a good news club in your elementary school and see uh, what the next steps would be to get that done. Uh, and so CEF will work with you to get those good news clubs in the schools, to get volunteers, to get people trained, and to get those resources to bring the good news to these young boys and girls. You know, one of the cases that we litigated years ago, and we represent Child Evangelism Fellowship across the country, and thank God we've never lost a case, never lost a case uh, in court on behalf of Child Evangelism Fellowship, and we've done hundreds of these. But I remember one of our early cases in Los Angeles. Los Angeles uh, County did not allow the Good News Clubs because they were Christian in nature, but they allowed the Scouts and the club boys, uh, you know, Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts and a bunch of others. And but they wouldn't allow the Good News Clubs. Well, you know, we got affidavits in court that we submitted by a principal of another school in California outside of Los Angeles and also a bus driver of another school outside of Los Angeles. And both of them said that when the Good News Clubs came on campus, they noticed a positive behavioral change in mm -hmm. the students. Even the bus driver said that the students uh, behaved better toward one another and toward the adults and towards the teachers as well. And in fact, in one case, the principal had a Good News Club at his school, moved to another school, and he told the court in this declaration that he personally tried to get a, an additional good news club in his new school because he saw the positive impact that it makes on the lives of these young boys and girls. You know, it's so, first of all, I wanna congratulate you for the good work you're doing, not just here in Hawaii, but all of the great wins you're having across the nation because we like to live vicariously with what's happening in all the other states. Um, so of course we have to rejoice when something happens here. But I think it's important for people to realize that, you know, when they took prayer out of public schools a long time ago, this is a great opportunity to put prayer back into school and to do it in a way that will, you know, I, we can only make change if we bring hope and the good news of Jesus Christ brings hope. And if you've got kids that are attending this and it's changing their behavior and they're blessing the school, I don't understand why this could be a bad thing, you know, but unfortunately this is, especially in blue states like Hawaii, this is the kind of things that we face. What should parents be looking for, you know, when they're, when they're sending their kids to public schools, you know, what are their rights? I mean, a kid can wear a t-shirt, right? That says, I love Jesus. I mean, you know, what, what can parents be armed with when they send their kids to school? Well, first of all, I would counsel parents to understand that when you send your child to a public school, particularly, we're talking about public schools at this stage, that you're literally sending them to a war zone. It's not the kind of school that you experienced when you were younger. I can tell you that for a fact. There are things that are happening even in places where you think might be conservative mm -hmm. uh, because you think, well, that can't happen in my school, but it is happening. It's happening everywhere. Mm 
Hawaii, no matter where it is. Uh, it's happening in your school. And what's happening is a real assault against these children. And for example, with the LGBTQ agenda that we see, these kids are being confused. You know, kids go through growing times where they're just confused about themselves anyway. They have questions about who they are, um, how they look, how they feel, how they fit in. And then they get bombarded by these clubs and the teachers and the teachings that they are confronted with that, you know what? The depression, the anxiety, the, the fact that you're discomfortable with your body. Well, you know what the problem is? You're born in the wrong gender. You're really, you know, God made a mistake. They won't say God made a mistake, but that's essentially what they're saying. That if you just change your gender, everything will be fine. All your depression, your anxiety, your self-esteem, all of those things will be fine. So let's put you on puberty blockers, cross-sex hormones, and then we'll go through some mutilating surgeries that will amputate healthy body parts and all will be fine. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, these kids are very, very confused about this. And they want to be fine. They want to fit in. They want to feel better. And they're being deceived uh, in situations that can sterilize them and even kill them and cause their situation to be much, much worse. So understand that your child is going to be confronted with this. And that's why we need the Good News Clubs there. Because many of these kids come from broken homes. Um, I was talking to a parent recently, a grandparent up in Richmond, Virginia. And her grandchild is being raised by a witch. Um, and that actually has seances in the home. Well, this little boy came to a good news club and gave his life to the Lord Jesus, mm -hmm. completely transformed his life. And now he prays for his mom. The situation at home is just unbelievable. You would never know that he's going through these kinds of things beatings and other kinds of things that he's experienced from his uh, mother who's practicing witchcraft. You would never know that if you just saw him even in your church or on the street or maybe in your classroom, but he's going through unbelievable stress. And it's the good news club that brought real good news to him and gave him peace. And he's got a place to be able to have support. The other thing is that when the parents see the change behavior in their kids, they realize something's happened differently and they want to know what. And so when you look at statistics, 85%, if you were to survey people, adults, uh, and say, when did you first make a decision to follow Jesus as your Lord and Savior? 85% will say it was before the conclusion of my 13th birthday. Now, they may have made a deeper walk uh, and deeper commitments as they grow older, of course. And some, obviously, like me, I was outside of that 4 to 14 window. But most, 85%, will actually make that decision in those early years. That's why it's so critically important. And that's why, you know, from a Christian perspective, we understand why these kids are under attack. Why is it that they're walking into these war zones? Why is it that they're experiencing so many unbelievable things that we never experience? It's because the adversary knows the same thing. This is a very important age, and it's most important and very critical that we provide these good news opportunities to children. For parents, I encourage you to do this. I think you ought to start these in your private schools. You ought to start these in your churches, and certainly most of all, we ought to have them in every public elementary school in the country. Amen. I'm with you there. And I know that it's important for parents, especially in this day and age. Like you said, kids are being bombarded with so much negativity, you know, not only in the schools, which is a big part, right? Because they're there. How many, you know, how many hours a day times five times a week, right? So they're there under this umbrella of negativity and just horrible teaching that 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 most parents became aware of during COVID, right? Because you're sitting in the room and you're listening to what your kids are learning because it was all happening right there. So there was a little bit of a positive thing that happened because of the COVID lockdown. I think a lot of parents really woke up to what was being taught to their kids, but the battle's far from over. And I'm so grateful to Liberty Council, you know, for what you guys are doing. So as far as the case in Hawaii goes, you got your injunction. So what happens now? 
Well, we are the, the Child Evangelism Fellowship uh, state and local leaders are very excited. So they are busily working to get volunteers for some of these schools where they had no access. Some of them did have access, but many of the schools stopped their access after COVID. So they are preparing for the opening of the school year. So now is a time to contact Child Evangelism Fellowship. You can contact them through us, uh, lc.org. Our phone number is right there on the webpage, as well as our email. We can put you in touch with the CEF organization. Uh, maybe you could be a volunteer. Maybe you could get the training. But certainly get a good news club in your school. And if you're um, in a church there, uh, have your church adopt a, an elementary school. And what I mean by that is, Present this to your church leadership. Mm. Have them pray that a good news club would actually be in their school that's in your area. And there's maybe more than one elementary school. Adopt it by prayer. Adopt it by financial support as well. Uh, you can connect with Child Evangelism Fellowship and underwrite the cost. It's primarily the materials that they uh, pass out. It's not very much to be able to have a good news club in your school. So really that's next. Uh, we've got the injunction, so that's in place, and that means that the uh, the state, the entire state, uh, Department of Education is now under a court order that they have to provide equal access. We want to make sure that every school gets the message, of course, whenever this uh, school year opens up, so we'll be very much involved over the next few months. That is so great. And I know that there might be a few viewers and listeners maybe that don't have kids. And so maybe they're like, well, you know, this doesn't really apply to me, but it really does. And yes. I, I, you know, we have to pay attention to what's happening in our communities, even if we have grown up kids or we don't have kids. But I want to talk to those people right now, the ones that don't have kids, because there's other ways you can help too. Liberty Council, it, are you guys a 501c3? Yes, we are 501c3. So contributions are tax deductible. Yeah. So if you're somebody sitting there and you go, I don't have kids, but I have some extra money lying around, maybe you could donate some money to Liberty Council because they're the ones on the front line fighting for the rights of these kids and parents in public school system. And that's not the only cases you take, right? I mean, Liberty Council, you guys have been around for a while. You want to tell us some of the other good cases you've had? Yes, uh, we we were founded, uh, Anita and I, my wife and I, we founded it in 1989, so this is our 35th year. We have a wide variety of cases. The three primary categories are religious freedom, and that obviously involves good news clubs, but many, many other issues regarding religious freedom. We did a lot of litigation on behalf of churches and places of worship during the COVID lockdowns, and we had two wins at the U.S. Supreme Court, a 5-4 win in 2020, and a six to, to three win in 2021 that stopped uh, these lockdowns against churches. Uh, we also, in addition to religious freedom, uh, have uh, the platform of the sanctity of human life, protecting mm -hmm. life from God's creation from the moment of conception, and God's design for marriage and family. So those are the three general areas. Uh, we had a huge win at the United States Supreme Court recently, nine to zero, uh, that nine to zero win came out of a case that we litigated out of Boston at the U.S. Supreme Court. It went up there and we won nine to zero. I argued the case at the U.S. Supreme Court. And that case ultimately led to the overturning of a terrible 51 year old precedent that goes back to the liberal activist decade of the 1970s. That's the decade of Roe versus Wade, 1973. This particular case that was overruled by the Supreme Court was also in the 70s, 1971, Lemon versus Kurtzman, and it did terrible damage to the First Amendment. So we got that overturned, 51 years of terrible precedent, and now we have a very uh, significant precedent that was generations in the making, but will have generational impact into the decades ahead of us. I think that might have slipped over some people's heads, so I, I want to say that again, because that is huge. You said it was a 9-0 Yes, it was 9-0, Shirtliff versus City of Boston. It was a case uh, where Hal Shirtliff, the founder of Camp Constitution, wanted to celebrate uh, the Constitution during Constitution Week, which is a federal recognized day, September 17, every year. And he wanted to recognize the Judeo-Christian heritage and history of the Bostonian founders and leaders and also those of Massachusetts. So John Adams would be one, our first vice president. 
And uh, he also um, was the second president, John Quincy Adams, uh, many of these others. You know, this is the place of the Boston Tea Party. So lots of heritage and history there. And so they said that when he wanted to use the public forum flagpole that was open for everybody, they had allowed 284 applications with everyone being approved over a 12-year period, all kinds of viewpoints, pro-China, anti-China, pro-LGBT, all kinds of things, but not his flag because they said it was a Christian flag. They would only allow it if he changed the name on the application. If he if he considered it to be a secular flag, it was okay. If he considered it to be a religious or Christian flag, it was not okay. And consequently, um, they denied him just because of his perception of the flag. The symbols on the flag were fine. They didn't have a problem with the flag itself. But if you thought the flag represented something religious, no go. If it was something secular, okay. And they relied upon this 1971 case of Lemon versus Kurtzman. So the Supreme Court took up the case and uh, they ruled nine to zero in our favor. And that ultimately overturned this 1971, 51 year terrible precedent that did incredible damage to the First Amendment, free speech clause, free uh, exercise of religion clause, and also the establishment clause. It was used by the liberal activist 70 courts, 70s court um, that pushed abortion and they didn't like Christian viewpoints or religious um, freedom. And so the 71 case was used to gut some of the protections of the First Amendment. The 73 case, of course, was Roe versus Wade. That was the activist decade of the 70s. Those cases are gone now. And so we have a huge new day ahead of us. And consequently, um, you know, good news clubs, I think going back to your other point, back in the 60s when the Supreme Court ruled against prayer, this was part of this activist court back then that didn't like Christianity, Judeo-Christian values. You know, now we have even greater opportunity. Rather than just having a generic uh, prayer that may last for 30 seconds or 60 seconds, now we can bring the undiluted gospel of Jesus Christ to the public school immediately after school through these good news clubs. And we have much more opportunity now based on our Shirtliff versus City of Boston case that overruled this 51-year-old precedent. And you know what I love about this too is the witness of these students, right? So when you, these students are going to this good news club and their lives start to change, they're a witness yeah. to other kids. And it's so important, right? I mean, peer pressure can be a good thing too, right? If it, if, if you're walking in the faith of Jesus Christ and people see that, then they want what you have, right? And that's what we want our kids to be able to do is, and we're changing the public schools from the inside out. Oh, you're so right. It, not only a witness to each other, their peers, but also to their teachers. Yes. Well. Teachers see a difference and they know, you know, this little boy is now going to the good news clubs and there's a change of that boy's behavior, that girl's behavior before and after. And why is it different? And, you know, in this one particular case regarding this little boy, that I was telling you that's raised in this home where his mother engages in witchcraft. He was talking to his grandmother. He said that he was sitting at the table and his mother, uh, one who was engaged in witchcraft, came behind him and smacked him over the back of the head with a brush, caused him to bleed. He went into the bathroom, put his head under the sink to stop the bleeding. When the put a towel around his head, when the bleeding finally stopped, he came out and he sat beside his mom on the couch on the edge of the couch, and he placed on her a crown, a crown that he had made uh, at the Good News Club that had sparkles and, and glitter on it. And the grandmother said, why did you do that? And he looked at her like, well, you know, Grandma, you know why I did that. Why did you do it? And you know what he said, this little boy? Because Jesus says to forgive people. I mean... That's the change of heart of this little boy. And his mom certainly begins to see that. And, and I believe that through these kids, 
that get introduced to these um, good news clubs and get introduced to Jesus Christ and their lives are transformed, they are a witness to their fellow classmates, to their teachers, to their principals, to their parents, to everyone around them. And we have seen situations where these parents come to the Lord because they've seen a change in their children and they want to know what caused that. What is it that you have that I don't have? And these little children have brought their parents into a position of seeking what they have found in Jesus Christ. So that's why these are so critically important. Time is of the essence to get these in the schools because the older a child gets, uh, it's kind of like a, a twig or a branch growing. The younger uh, it is, it's easier to mold that child or that twig, if you will. The older it gets, it's harder to mold it. It gets hardened in its ways, if you will. And that's why uh, these statistics are very critically important. 85%, as I mentioned, make that decision for the Lord before the conclusion of their 13th birthday. So that's why this 4 to 14 window is so critically important. All right. So in this last minute or two, I want to encourage our listeners to do a couple of things. First of all, pray for Liberty Council um, because they're out there. They're fighting for faith, family, and freedom and life. And this is very, very important to us Christians. This is this is what moves us and shakes us is our belief in Jesus Christ. That's why we do what we do. I also want our viewers and listeners to pay attention to what's happening and not only in the public schools, but the private schools. Matt said, you know, this good news clubs could be at every school and that would be awesome. Let's let's make that happen. So let's do that. And if you can't do anything else, then at least consider a gift to either Liberty Council or the Good News Club. Um, and we'll put those links down so that you know how to find these people. Uh, Matt, I want to give you the last word. I know that that a lot of times when people are listening to these kind of shows, a couple of things may stick in their head. Maybe they got bored. Maybe they um, went to get a cup of coffee. But I want you to leave them with something that really will, that they, that they for them to think about. Well, whether you have children or not, uh, certainly, we live at a very critical time in world history. You know, a lot of people before us have said the same thing in their generation. But really, when you look at all the different assaults that we see happening, particularly against our children uh, and against our country, against our Judeo-Christian values, both here as, as well as around the world, understand that God birthed you for this moment in time, and he didn't make a mistake. And so instead of getting dismayed with all the things that are going on around us, be encouraged because it might be a long time, like in the case that we worked to take to the Supreme Court, it took decades, but we never gave up. We never gave up. We had some wins. We had some losses. The same thing with Roe versus Wade in the abortion cases. We had some wins. We had some losses. We had some heartaches along the way. But we never, ever gave up because we know with God, all things are possible. All things mm -hmm. are possible. And we know who ultimately writes the last chapter of the book. So stay engaged, be hopeful. And, you know, your faithfulness will ultimately pay off in the long run. And so now God has called you for this moment in history to make a difference, not just to be another placeholder, but to make a difference in people's lives and make a difference that echoes through generations that go after us, that echo through history. And so ask the Lord what it is that he would want you to do, how you can be involved. And I can tell you what, that prayer, be prepared for the Lord to open up doors that you did never imagine, could never even think about, and never even are on your radar, because God will work in the hearts of, of those people who are willing and uh, ready to do something for him, and you will be amazed at what God will do for you. So be encouraged. Uh, with God, all things are possible. I'm excited about not only today, but the future, because we know who holds the future in his hands. Amen. And I can't even build on that because that is awesome. Don't forget to visit Liberty Council. That's, um, I believe it's lc.org. Yeah, lc.org, lc.org. Okay, so make sure you visit him. Give a shout out to Matt. And Matt, we appreciate you spending your time in explaining the situation to us here in, in Hawaii. So we send you off with good wishes. Thank you. Good to be with you.
Mahalo. Well, everybody else will see you next week. Mahalo, everybody. All right. See, that was pretty painless, right. huh? Yeah, that was great. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, Matt, let's stay in touch because I do okay. appreciate all the good work you're doing. Sounds good. Appreciate it. All right. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.